This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. Thank you for joining us on the News at 6. I'm Amanda Starantino. And I'm Mark Mullins. First, I'm Mark Mullins. First tonight, this video pretty much sums up the day outside. Steady rain for much of the morning and afternoon, leaving wet streets and bringing us some cooler temperatures. Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory with what you need to know for the rest of the evening. How about that? Puddles in the streets. We had almost an inch of rain in the metro area. 72 degrees now. That's unbelievable this time of the year. The east wind at about 10 miles per hour. We've got a few more hours of rain, especially from Terre Haute to Indy to Richmond to south, and temperatures will be steady. There's your rain in the metro area. That's not to say that some of this won't be north of Indy as well. Towards Cicero, Morse Reservoir, some rain back south of Lebanon. But you can see here, this is trending to the the east as the northern fringe of this kind of fades away. The most widespread rain will be in the southern half of the state through the evening hours. Here's the probability of rain and you can see how it decreases certainly by the time we get to nine o'clock and then overnight rain chances continue to diminish. And right now, how the school year will begin for IPS students and teachers is the topic of discussion at this meeting. As we speak, the IPS administration is recommending that the school year begin entirely remotely. And they are presenting that proposal to the IPS Board of School Commissioners, who will then vote on the recommendation. If approved, the IPS school year would begin on August 17th entirely online. In-person learning would be delayed until at least October. We will follow this vote every step of the way and we'll bring you the decision as soon as we know what it is. And today, Indianapolis Mayor Joe Hogsett and Dr. Virginia Kane with the Marion County Public Health Department laid out guidance for this school year in Marion County. First, all students who attend class in person and who are over the age of eight will be required to wear a mask. A dedicated Marion County Public Health Department team will be available to all schools for emergency testing, which will have a 24 to 48 hour results turnaround time. A Marion County Public Health Department team will review safety plans continuously with school leaders and high risk teachers and students will be allowed to opt out of in person learning in compliance with federal requirements. This is a choice that we made as a district and we're going to keep evaluating and try to get kids back into schools as soon as possible. Today, the school year officially began for Brownsburg, Greenfield Central, and Washington Township School Districts. However, they all went back in different ways. RTV6's Stephanie Wade shows us how each district took a different approach to keeping kids and teachers safe. Washington Township students are back to class today, but not in here. All eight elementary schools, three middle schools, and North Central High School are all returning 100% virtual. All 11,000 Washington Township students are heading back to school today in a way like no other. The school board president telling me it was the rise in cases in Marion County that made them take a pause in welcoming students back to the classroom and utilizing 100% e-learning. But that doesn't mean teachers are also home. Walking through the halls today, we saw teacher after teacher sitting at their computers, leading their online classes from their desk. Who would have ever expected we'd be, you know, leaving school one day and then finding out, oh, you're not coming back for four or five months. One of the big things I think is different than when we had to shut down uh, and back in the spring is that we're a little better prepared for the curriculum development. So it's not the same as just get people through the end of the year. Now it's really, no, this is really going to have to do some learning. In other districts like Brownsburg today, they did return to in-person instruction. Parents were communicated their back to school plans in early July and given the option of in-person or virtual. The district telling me 12% of their families opted for e-learning. As for Washington Township, they say they're going to reevaluate e-learning at every board meeting, depending on what the data tells them, before making the decision to return. Stephanie Wade, RTV6. Washington Township Schools has also handed out about 6,500 Chromebooks, one to every high school student at Central at North Central and to elementary and middle school students in need of them, plus hotspots to fill the gap for Wi-Fi connectivity. 
A spike in new COVID-19 cases and deaths today, but there was also a big jump in the number of people tested. The Indiana State Department of Health confirms 970 new co cases of COVID-19. That is an increase of more than 300 from yesterday. The state also reports 13 new deaths, which is five more than yesterday. But today, the Department of Health also says more than 11,600 Hoosiers were tested for coronavirus. That is an increase of more than 4,000 people tested from yesterday. In total so far, more than 735,000 people in Indiana have been tested for COVID-19 with an 8.9% positivity rate. 2,746 Hoosiers have died from COVID-19 since the pandemic began in March. March happened. Everything kind of fell apart for everybody all at once. During this pandemic, we've shown you the major struggles small business owners may face. Many have even been forced to close their doors and lay off workers. As some businesses begin to rebound now, we check in again with one shop owner who tells our Nicole Griffin the reason why families staying home is actually helping his business. As families continue to try to entertain themselves by staying home during the pandemic, puzzles are now one of the most popular products being sold here at Moonshot Games. It's one of the big reasons they've not only been able to stay open, but they are also now expanding. We sell thousands and thousands of puzzles and it's so cool to see. In April, we first introduced you to Jason Manship, the owner of Moonshot Games, after his store in Noblesville was forced to close down. We uh, launched an e-commerce store, so we're running everything out of my garage. Later that month, he received grant money from Noblesville and was able to bring back employees. In May, we were there as he moved back into his store, and then weeks later, he showed us new social distancing measures inside. We've spaced out the tables for social distancing. And then an opportunity to expand. On July 1st, Moonshot Games opened a new store on Mass Ave. We were blessed because the folks that were in here before just had an awesome setup. Um, and so they were friends of ours, an uh, organization called Kingmakers. With a beer and wine permit, Manship says the store caters to the crowd Mass Ave attracts. They've now doubled their staff. Kyle Haley is the new store manager. It's been a lot of fun. I'm learning a lot and I'm teaching a lot to the new team about managing bars and helping out with staffing and stuff. So it's been a lot of fun. Looking back on the last few months, Manship says it's the people he works with and the customers that have helped them push through and succeed. When you covered our story from my, my garage, my store manager in Noblesville moved in with me. He literally lived with my wife and I for 45 days when quarantine was happening when we weren't allowed to go anywhere. Well, having those types of folks just jumping in and doing everything they can to make it happen uh, was, was awesome. Working for you downtown, Nicole Griffin, RTV6. They are still limiting capacity at both Moonshot Games locations. They have plexiglass barriers, as you saw in the story, and sanitation procedures they follow. Today, RTV6 and the Indiana Black Expo teamed up for the Hiring Hoosiers Virtual Employment Opportunity Fair. From noon to 4 p.m., our virtual interview space let many of you connect directly with recruiters from your home office, tablet, or even your phone. Companies like Hiring Hoosiers Partners, Ivy Tech, FedEx, Carrier, Delta, and the Indiana Workforce Development, Carvana, among others, they all participated. But if you missed out, we have more opportunities ahead. The next RTV6 in Indiana Black Expo Hiring Hoosiers Employment Opportunity Fair is set for September 22nd. We are now learning a juvenile injured when a construction site structure collapsed this week has died. The collapse happened just after 4 o'clock Monday afternoon at a commercial structure site near State Road 267 and Northfield Drive in Brownsburg. At the time of the emergency call, a storm was in the area, but authorities couldn't confirm the cause of the collapse. Medics took a total of four people to the hospital, three adults and one juvenile. The juvenile patient was in critical condition, but has since died at Riley Hospital for Children. A Greenfield woman credited with saving a man's life now needs the community's help as she battles stage four colon cancer. Megan St. Torm shows us how people are reaching out to help. This is Angel Dudley. We first introduced you to her back in 2017 when she stepped in to help a man who cut his arm on a broken window and ruptured a main artery. Just the right right place, right time. She had just taken a first aid class and knew exactly what to do. She wrapped his arm in a jacket and took her belt off to use that as a tourniquet. She was able to stop any further blood loss and keep him alive until the ambulance arrived. He's always in my mind and in my prayers. But now she's the one asking for prayers and support. Dudley has started aggressive chemotherapy treatment. And even though she's still working, she says medical bills continue 
to add up. That this is not going to be a inexpensive venture for me. Her sister created a GoFundMe account to help with those expenses. So far, dozens of community members have contributed, saying she always does for others. So now it's their turn to do the same for her. Um, Angel is a very giving person. I mean, she is constantly doing and giving for everyone else. And uh, biblically, you know, that's that's going to come back to her. To have it come back on me is strange. It's a very weird feeling for me because I've always wanted to help people and now I need help. So far, people have donated more than $1,100 to help Dudley out. She says she's determined to beat cancer and this puts her one step closer to doing that. Working for you, Megan Sanctorum, RTV6. And if you want to read more about her life-saving actions in 2017, we will have a link to that story on our website at theindychannel.com. And the pandemic has not just been hard for adults, it's creating stress in the lives of our children. We spoke to a child psychologist, what you can do to make sure your kids are in the right frame of mind heading back to school. Starting Saturday, the games count for real. Will the Pacers be ready for a two-week sprint into the playoffs? Coming up in sports, see what the team has to say about their time in the bubble so far. I'll have more on the rain. We'll go on a radar tour, but we'll also talk about our cooler pattern, how long that will last. Coming up. After months of dealing with the, so the pandemic, social distancing, and now an unprecedented school year, parents are no doubt feeling stressed, and that goes for your kid as well. To get your students safely back to school and in the right mindset to learn, I got answers for you from a child psychologist. 2020 has been an unpredictable year, and that uncertainty is starting to weigh down on our youngest Hoosiers. Dr. Jerry Fletcher is a child adolescent psychologist at Ascension St. Vincent. He says the pandemic is the reason behind a lot of depression and anxiety he is seeing with his patients. Kids understand the isolation and the lack of communication, lack of attachment to friends as becoming a significant issue, both in terms of their self-esteem and and how well they relate to the rest of the world. The best thing a parent can do is keep an open conversation with their kids. This helps ease any anxiety they may be feeling. Dr. Fletcher explains that the fear kids have right now is not necessarily the pandemic itself. It's the fact that their lives are so different. It is important to validate their feelings and keep things honest. Acknowledge the fears the child has and to be able to process those fears regularly and continue to do that over time. So repetitive discussions, discussions that are that are based on positives, uh, discussions that are that give them the sense that lots of people are working on this issue, that there are smart scientists that are trying to get a vir a, a, a vaccination so it goes away. So give them the hope that things are going to be stable in the in future. But in the meantime, do what you can to stabilize each day for them. Parents should also try to keep the children's schedule as consistent as possible. This can help with making a very unpredictable time feel a little more secure. But children's in particular uh, need to have a schedule so they get their life predictable. So as best you can, you want to keep a schedule, not just at school, but at home. Kids also can pick up on their parents' feelings of anxiety. You need to try to help yourself as much as possible in order to be there for your kids. If they have questions that you simply can't answer, Dr. Fletcher recommends working together with your child to find the answers together. While having these discussions, keep things on a positive note and continue to ensure healthy habits for a greater good. One of the things that it ends up being important is that not to tell them the things they need to do like that from a position of fear, but from a position of caring about others. We wear, we wear the mask so we don't give problems to other people. We clean our, the surfaces or clean our hands so we don't harm other people. It's not that you have to be scared of getting that yourself. It's that you're doing it as, in a positive way for other people. And Dr. Fletcher says if you notice significant changes in your kids like lack of sleep, obsessive fears, they don't want to leave your side, or if they look and act depressed, you should make a visit to your doctor for a professional evaluation. And tonight at 8 p.m., join us on the RTV6 Facebook page for a live Q&A to ask Dr. Fletcher your questions. 
Today, our partners at Radio One aired a two-hour back-to-school town hall. And as part of our Safely Back to School initiative, we streamed it live on the RTV6 Facebook page. Hot 96.3. AM 1310 The Light and 106.7 WTLC brought on a panel of experts to answer questions listeners and the rest of the community had. And IPS Superintendent Alicia Johnson talked about what it's going to take to keep students and teachers safe. And she says it all starts at home, especially keeping on top of your child's temperature. The reality is for you know schools to be able to open, um, and I'm sure uh, Dr. Wendell can talk about this, it has to be you know, family, community, school, all doing their part to create uh, the safest possible conditions. So, you know, that temp checking at home where a parent or a family member could see looks like this might be elevated. Maybe it's just a, a you know, a cold yeah. or, you know, something else going on. But at least at that point, the, ch the parent can know I need to, you know, keep my child home uh, so I can figure out what's going on. And right now, the Indianapolis Public Schools Administration is re recommending that the school year begin entirely remotely. The IPS Board of School Commissioners will vote on that proposal tonight. If approved, the school year will still begin on August 17th, but it will be entirely online. In-person learning would be delayed until at least October. A day of rain, and it's not the only one within the seven-day planner. Here are some rainfall amounts, and I don't say totals yet because we'll still add to these, especially southern half of the state, over the next couple of hours. After 9 o'clock, the rain really starts to wind down. A few spots over an inch. I'll show you one exception to that, over two and a half inches northeast of Columbus, just about two miles northeast of Columbus. Weather Observer reported almost 2.6 inches of rain. Saturday, the next opportunity for more widespread rain. Some of it could be heavy. Sunday, the rain chance diminishes and the temperature comes up just a little bit. I want to show you somewhere, I think Saturday evening into the early overnight hours, we'll have a band of potentially two to three, maybe even isolated four inch amounts of rain set up. Where that will be exactly is still or too early to say, but I do think there'll be widespread heavier rain on the Saturday. Well, the national weather story becomes Tropical Storm Isaias, and it will become a Category 1 hurricane. Looks like it stays just off the east coast of Florida, curving toward the Outer Banks. We'll see how that plays out, but you'll hear more and more about that as we get closer to the weekend, and we're getting close. Terre Haute to Indianapolis to Anderson and Muncie. There's your area of rain. This is starting to shrink a bit. We've got rain back out over the airport, which is where the official rain gauge is, by the way. That's sliding into the metro area. Other areas of rain that are heavier from uh, Clay County to Greencastle down to Spencer, anywhere west of 231 towards Terre Haute. There's some more widespread rain. Definitely has an impact on temperatures. It's 69 in Greencastle. Temperatures no warmer than the low 70s across central Indiana. Tomorrow, the rain chance is down. The temperature comes up a little, but not a whole lot. We'll still be in the 70s through the morning. Watch out for patchy, dense fog where we've had rain today, and if the sky breaks up at all, the wind is fairly light. I think we'll have some fog. Temperatures in the upper 70s tomorrow. That rain returns on a widespread basis later in the day Saturday into Saturday night. Early next week, temperatures still in the 70s after Monday's rain event. Rain chances decrease for the rest of next week. All right, Kevin, thank you. Hey, we are about 48 hours away from the official restart of the Pacers season. Of course, everything is different because of the pandemic. The Pacers are with other NBA teams living in a bubble in Orlando, which is where they will play the rest of their games. Brad Brown shows us how the blue and gold are getting ready to go back to work. July would normally put some of the Pacers in the NBA Summer League. Just not most of these guys and certainly not in this setting. I think guys are going to be uncomfortable the whole time. Um, I think guys need to shift their focus away from being uncomfortable um, and, and shift it to, to playing good basketball. But after three weeks in the Orlando bubble, it's time to finally play the games that count. The Pacers get back to business on Saturday, the first of eight games leading up to the playoffs. We're looking forward to the real grind. I think um, everybody, of course, is looking forward to the, um, into the playoffs, but we got to take all these games as seriously as possible. Um, I think guys is ready to go out to you know, play it for real. DeMontis Sabonis is out for now. A foot injury sent him back home for treatment, and he may not return at all. It's going to change a lot. Him setting screens is he's a great screen setter as well. So 
I mean, it shouldn't change that much, but obviously missing a piece like that, it hurts us. But uh, we have bigs who, who know how to play basketball. It definitely tough to see him go, but you know, it's something for me. I mean, even when he's here, it's just whenever my numbers call, I'm gonna go and do, go in there and just do what I can to, you know, help the team and, and be successful. As for Victor Oladipo, he's in. Or is he? Oladipo played some solid minutes in the three scrimmage games, but never really committed to going the distance with this summer season. You gotta make sure that no movements bother my knee or, you know, kind of I'm hindered from making certain movements. I gotta make sure everything is good. So um, day by day, you know, game by game, reassessing after every game, making sure that I'm good, my knee is good. Um, and then we'll go from there. And like every other team that's still playing, some questions will have to wait to be answered until another couple of games get played. With no true home court advantage on the line, this playoff push takes on a different feel. We were going to have some bad play in games like this. We want to try to get that out of our system and uh, make sure that we get connected on both ends of the floor, all of us, uh, for this race start. The Pacers restart as the number five seed in the Eastern Conference. They could climb as high as third, and they can't finish any worse than sixth. As it goes right now, most likely the Heat or the Celtics will be their first-round playoff opponent. The Sixers are also in the mix as well. Philadelphia happens to be their first opponent of the restart in Orlando. That game is on Saturday. Here's a look at the calendar for the rest of the eight-game stretch. It includes a couple of important games late against the Heat. The playoffs will start on August 17th, and the NBA Finals are set to start on September 30th. Brad Brown, RTV6 Sports. Rain is not over. It's streaming from Terre Haute east toward Greencastle and Cloverdale. Some rain in the metro area, but overall diminishes this evening. Amanda. Thank you for making RTV6 your choice for news. Join us again for the news at 7.